Thanks so much for joining with us. Dozens of soldiers killed, civilian casualties. Blood has already begun to flow from Russia's attack on Ukraine. Bombs are exploding in several cities, and Russian troops are advancing on several fronts. President Putin has vowed to stop anyone who tries to interfere. While countless people are fleeing for their lives, Ukraine's military force is fighting back, and President Zelensky is calling for citizens to take up arms. CBN's Brody Carter reports on the outbreak of war in Ukraine. War sirens wailing in Kyiv before dawn, followed by early morning explosions in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Explosions reported near Kyiv and other cities across Ukraine as Russia targeted key infrastructure, military air bases, and air defense systems. The bombing sent Ukrainians scrambling for safety. These scenes were from the port city of Mariupol, people lining up at ATMs and packing up their cars. In Kyiv, the capital, traffic backing up as far as the eye can see. Overnight, President Putin announced the beginning of Russian military operations in Ukraine, disguising his full-scale invasion as a mission to support Russian rebels in the Donbass region of Luhansk and Donetsk, land he claims belongs to Russia. Now a doorway for Russian troops into Ukrainian territory. It won't be bloodless. Uh, there will be suffering. There will be sacrifice. Ukraine's foreign ministry says they've landed in the southern port of Odessa, crossing into Kharkiv. This security footage shows Russian military crossing into Ukraine from Crimea, the peninsula seized by Russia in 2014. Ukrainian forces are fighting back in Donbass, as well as regions in the north and south. Dozens of soldiers reported dead so far, as well as civilian casualties. President Zelensky calling on Ukrainians to rise up and fight the invaders in the cities and town squares, encouraging citizens to take up arms. The country's UN ambassador delivering this message to Russia at last night's Security Council meeting. There is no purgatory for war criminals. They go straight to hell. Ambassador. Meanwhile, the world community is responding with promise of sanctions, but no military aid. We are banding together in strong terms to condemn these outrageous acts in the strongest possible terms. President Biden issuing a statement last night saying, quote, Russia alone is responsible for the death and destruction this attack will bring, and the United States and its allies and partners will respond in a united and decisive way. The world will hold Russia accountable. The president is expected to address the nation at noon today and announce crippling economic sanctions against Russia. The White House has been very clear it will not send troops into Ukraine, even to rescue Americans. However, U.S. troops are on the border with Poland and ready to help those fleeing from Ukraine. Brody Carter, CBN News. Well, George Thomas joins us now from Ukraine. So, George, tell us what's going on there. Thousands are fleeing the evasion. They're, they're heading your direction. How are you preparing and how's the city preparing for the humanitarian crisis? Yeah, I, I woke up early this morning as soon as I heard that Russia had invaded and uh, pretty much went to the streets and people were, there were long lines, Gordon, at the banks, at pharmacies, uh, at grocery stores. People were, were walking very fast. Some were running. You could just sense the panic, the fear. They were all on their phones. Uh, and then obviously they realized that a, that a sea of humanity is going to be heading their way. Local authorities here are expecting close to about 5 million uh, people today, the mayor of uh, the city of Lviv here, the largest city in the western part of the country, showed, uh, in essence, showed a, a website and a map showing about 6,000 shelters that have opened up. They've been preparing for this for the last eight eight years. Area churches, uh, synagogues. I was at the uh, largest synagogue uh, in Lviv uh, uh, yesterday, uh, and they were already feeding. Uh, families that had escaped from Kiev as well as from the eastern part of the country. So Lviv, uh, they call the city uh, the city of Lyon. Uh, and so they are there. They, they love to welcome tourists. But they have said to me repeatedly, if the Russian bear comes, this lion uh, will rise up. Uh, but uh, but these folks here in the city are ready to receive the sea of humanity coming their way. How much territory do you think Russia is trying to take right now? 
Yeah, if you look at a map of uh, Ukraine, remember, uh, Gordon, you know this, Ukraine is the largest city in Europe uh, outside of, of Russia. But if you look at a map of Ukraine, Ukraine. You have the Dnieper River, which is uh, Europe's fourth largest river that basically cuts the uh, country in half, right? It uh, flows from north to south all the way to the Black Sea. Uh, Kiev is smack dab in the middle. My, 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 my sense is that in these opening hours, opening days, Russia is going to look at basically to divide uh, this entire country in half. Everything to the east of the Dnieper, uh, Dnieper River that's their goal, is to, to basically cut the country in half. The reports are that uh, Russian troops have, have easily uh, rolled their tanks right across the Crimean uh, bridge. They've easily come from the north, from Belarus. Where the struggle is right now, my understanding is that just before we came on the air, they have not managed yet to cross what's called the line of contact in the east, basically where the war has been uh, raging for the last eight years. So uh, Ukrainian forces have dug in. So far, Russians have not ma managed to cross that line of contact. But the picture you have here, Gordon, is, is sort of a choke point, And the Ukrainians are, in essence, you know, surrounded on all sides. Well, Russia is now claiming that they've completely destroyed the Ukrainian air defenses. Uh, so what do you think the Ukrainians want to see from NATO? Uh, the moment the bombs started uh, dropping, I have a very close contact in Mariupol, which is uh, the largest port city for, for Ukraine, and obviously it would be a prized possession uh, for the Russians if they, if they were to manage to, to capture it. I got on the phone with him this morning. Uh, while we were talking, I also had a chance to pray with him. He's a very uh, a significant, influential pastor in the region. And I said, what can we do? He says, George, we're tired of this talk of sanctions. We're tired about uh, NATO coming together, the alliance, everybody's uh, together. The reality is that, George, what we need is we need to see a hundred 200 uh, uh, United States air aircraft, fighter jets, NATO fighter jets hovering over the nation of Ukraine. He said, like that, Russia will stop. He says Russia now realizes that the United States and NATO, they are not going to put troops on the ground here uh, in his country. And they know, he knows, Vladimir Putin knows that and is taking advantage of that. Well, let's take a look at a larger map to show the NATO countries that are surrounding Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, if, if NATO fighter jets, if U.S. fighter jets get involved, I mean, there's a huge risk of this turning into World War III. Uh, is, is that understood on the ground in, in Ukraine? And, um, you know, it just, it just looks like they're just trying to completely annex Ukraine and bring it back into some kind of Russian Federation. Oh, Gordon, that is absolutely what uh, Vladimir Putin uh, wants. And he has telegraphed it uh, to the entire world. He said that I want to denazify de Ukraine, this idea that Ukraine is filled with Nazis. And it was actually a Nazi coup that uh, overthrew the, uh, uh, the regime of uh, uh, Viktor Yanukovych eight years ago. Uh, and in fact, you know, this past weekend at the, Zelen at the uh, Munich conference in Germany, Ukraine's president Zelensky in effect, uh, you know, said to the to the rest of the world, uh, listen, guys, uh, we have for the last 80 years been a shield against the army against the rest of Europe and NATO. Uh, the reality is that if Russia does manage to gobble up this entire country, look at that map. They will be on the doorsteps of Poland, Hungary. Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, and, and in, in combination with Belarus, Belarus has some about 48,000 troops, uh, combine those two countries and Russia taking over Ukraine, you will have Russia at the doorstep of NATO. And so you ask the question about, you know, uh, you, this could be a World War III, absolutely catastrophic. Ukrainians will say, we are an independent country. We are democratic. We have enjoyed freedom for the last 30 years. What is worth dying for? That is what they're worth. That is what they were, uh, that they're willing to die for in order to keep this liberty. They say it is a, it, it's a, it's a, uh, between freedom and tyranny. They don't want to live under a dictatorial regime. All right. Well, George, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you have some evacuation plans.
George Thomas reporting from Lev, Ukraine. Well, Israel has been urging Jews in Ukraine to leave the country for weeks now, and many of them are making, their, making the Jewish nation their home. The most recent group arrived just a few days ago, and Chris Mitchell brings us the report. Nearly half of the passengers on this Ukrainian flight are immigrating to Israel. We are very excited that you're here. Minister of Aliyah and Integration Panina Tamano Shata welcomed the newcomers. Our message is very clear for the Jews of Ukraine. The state of Israel will always be open for them, for whoever chooses to come here to embrace them, to accompany them. Dozens of Ukrainian Jews on this flight are some of the regular arrivals sponsored by the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Given the precarious situation in Ukraine, it's expected many more Ukrainian Jews will make their way here to Israel. Israel was created to be a safe haven for the Jewish people. The organization has helped Jews return to Israel for decades. This is biblical prophecy coming to fruition. When you read the scriptures, how awesome is it that you don't only see it unfolding before your eyes, but that you're taking part in it. This is all possible, everything. All these new immigrants coming off the plane in Israel, the fulfillment not only of their dream, but the dream of the prophets 2,500 years ago, is possible because Christians and Jews came together to bring them home. Although not a rescue flight, the passengers are glad to be free from an uncertain situation. We're scared because we don't know what happened. Uh, and we hope uh, for our flight, we wait, and we're waiting for our flight, and we're very happy that we are now in Israel. Three generations of the Zelensky family made the trip. We had a business in Donetsk. The first time they bombed all the businesses. Now we're afraid we'll lose everything again. Things are dangerous, and that's why we immigrated. It's an unbelievable experience. Reverend Johnny Moore, president of the Congress of Christian Leaders, says as a parent, he was happy to see freedom for these children. I just put myself in their shoes, you know, the, the opportunity to be able to go someplace. And that, that's what the state of Israel is for the Jewish people all around the world. If they need to, should they choose to, whatever their reasons. And I'm so proud that the Christian community for a full generation has decided to take personal responsibility to bless the people of Israel in this very, very, very practical way. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Ben Gurion Airport, Tel Aviv. Well, it's wonderful to see them making Aliyah, returning back to the nation of Israel, uh, the modern-day miracle that Israel exists. Uh, we're getting, coming close to the 75th anniversary, and it's, it's wonderful to see the return. It was once destroyed by a tornado, then later covered up by a parking lot. Now one of the oldest black churches in America is being rebuilt. The history of First Baptist Church is the subject of a documentary that producers say tells the untold story. Wendy Griffith traveled to Williamsburg, Virginia to bring us this firsthand look. Ringing a bell from the First Baptist Church in Virginia, one of the oldest black churches in America, founded under a grove of trees in 1776. It's a story 245 years in the making. The story of black Americans, free and slaves, gathering in secret to pray and worship together. It was a time when they weren't supposed to, to be worshiping together. That was a big risk, and they took that risk to fulfill their faith. Producers say the documentary, History Half Told is Untold, tells the amazing story of how white colonist Jesse Cole gave black enslaved preacher Moses a small 16 by 20 foot carriage house for worship. Sit down, down, sit down, sit down and take your rest. The story coming out of Bruton Parish is that Jesse Cole's wife loved the worship service that the blacks did so much she would come home and open her window and enjoy the songs and the, and the service. And the good thing about this is we found the descendants of that family, and the story is the same. So the parallel history integrates, and that's what we're trying to do with this film. After a tornado destroyed it, a second church built on the site in 1856 stood for 100 years. The rich history of First Baptist, however, was literally covered up when the city put a parking lot over the land 
and paid for a new church building a few blocks away. Thanks to efforts by Colonial Williamsburg and the Let Freedom Ring Foundation, archaeologists began uncovering the history, and Harshaw says that is bringing healing. You have some descendants right now that are still living that saw this process, this church at 1856 structure being knocked down and covered up with an asphalt parking lot. They're now getting to ride by and see it being uncovered. And that's helping bring the community, black and white, together. I want people to feel that healing can happen, that togetherness, it can happen. All of the things that we thought could not happen, all we have to do is come together and recognize each other's humanity and that we all serve the same God. The goal is to reconstruct the 1818 church right here on the site of where archaeologists discovered the remnants of the original meeting house, which eventually became known as First Baptist Church. It was probably a very lightly built structure, wooden siding that comes up from a brick foundation. Mm. We uncovered that several months ago and it will not survive long um, being exposed to the elements like right. we're experiencing today. So we are backfilling it right now and it will stay covered for the time being. And the hope and the expectation is that we will be able to rebuild that once, once the whole project is finished. Important discoveries so far include a one cent coin dating back to 1817, copper pins common on women's clothing at the time, and about 30 grave sites. The dig is scheduled to continue through this year, then work will begin on a reconstructed church. The goal, to open doors to the public by the fall of 2026, in time for the First Baptist 250th anniversary celebration. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Williamsburg. A 250 year celebration, that would be a wonderful time, a wonderful time to celebrate. You can see the documentary, History Half Told is Untold, February 25th through 27th at 8 p.m. on the CBN News Channel. A lot of different ways you can get that. You can go to CBNNews.com. You can download the CBN News app. Uh, we want you to see it. It'll also be available on CBN Family. So. Watch this. History half told is untold. Terry? Rick McCrary had COVID and he was crashing fast. He was struggling to breathe as his temperature soared. Before long, Rick was surrounded by black clouds and he saw the angel of death coming to kill him. July 2020. The McCrary family were making great memories on their vacation in the Florida Keys. But soon, those memories would take a terrible turn. On uh, July the 4th, Saturday morning, I knew something hit me early that morning. Uh, I was nauseated, it hit me in the stomach, and it was like turning a light switch on. 71-year-old Rick McCrary, husband, father, and grandfather, had contracted COVID-19. Within a week of coming home, Kay, his wife of 52 years, was dropping him off at the Baylor Hospital Emergency Room in Dallas, Texas. And I tried to be strong, but I didn't really know if I would ever see him again. We held hands, we hugged, and uh, we said our goodbyes. And I'll never forget the feeling of leaving my sweetheart in the parking lot. By then, Rick had developed double pneumonia and sepsis. To make matters worse, Rick was pre-diabetic, had a pacemaker, and had gone through numerous heart surgeries and prostate cancer. His odds of surviving were very slim. Meanwhile, Kay and their daughter Christy had also tested positive for COVID. Although neither were hospitalized, their symptoms were brutal. The aches and the pains were literally unbearable, and I didn't think I could stand it. Despite her pain, Kay still managed to pray for Rick. I remember saying a scripture, Rick will live, not die and declare the glory of the Lord. I mean, screaming it. Christy also reached out to a handful of friends to pray. All I could do was lift my head up and try to make text messages that would bullet point our prayer requests. I was so sick, that's all I could handle. Next thing I know, a day or two has gone by and hundreds of people across the country are getting these prayer texts. Still in the ER, Rick was declining. 
His oxygen levels plummeted, and the sepsis was spreading. Doctors put him on oxygen and strong medications, and they worked at first. I had stabilized those first two days, and then I had a crash. My body rejected the medicines, my temperature went up, my breathing they came to where I couldn't breathe. Doctors moved Rick to the ICU and managed to get him stabilized again. That night, Rick said he had a terrifying encounter. I could see pitch dark black skies, and then I would see what looked like lightning, but it lit up the whole sky. And in the background, when it was lit up, I could see a skeleton, and it was the death angel that had come for me. At exactly 3.18 that morning, a woman who had been praying for Rick said she heard from God. God said, wake up now. Rick is in trouble. Go pray. She wasn't the only one. Another lady that's not connected had woken up at 3.18 in the morning. God said, go get in your prayer chair. Someone can't breathe. And then I could see people pointing their fingers, shaking their fists, violently praying that you're not going to take this life, that Rick is going to live and Rick is not going to die. Rick woke up that morning determined to fight. I said, the devil, you're not going to win. You do not have my number. In the coming week, Rick's lungs began to clear. But now his sugar levels were spiking and he was still fighting sepsis, causing his white blood cell counts to rise to dangerously high levels. Weak and isolated with only brief visits from nurses, Rick's only contact with family was through FaceTime. And I thought, what am I going to do? My rock is leaving right before my eyes. Meanwhile, Kay, at home under a nurse's care, had become so ill, she couldn't even pray for her husband. And I thought, am I going to lose my father? And now I'm going to lose my mother. But through prayer, Christy and others around the country continued to fight. Gradually, all three of them improved. On day 12 of Rick's hospital stay, a doctor came into his room. Rick was being released. It was a joyous day. It was a fun day. They brought me home in a COVID-approved vehicle. And he walked through the door. We embraced and cried and cried. Many days we thought we would never be able to touch or feel or hold each other again. And uh, to experience that was just something that uh, it's hard to describe. It was glorious because it was life again. God had defeated death. After a couple of months, they had regained their health. Today, they're thankful that the Lord has given them more time to make many more memories. My friends are at all. We're all in all, because we've seen remarkable things today. Jesus has given us hope. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Without prayer warriors that were stronger than I was, I would have never lived through my experience. And I thank God that he's brought up friends of the family that know how to pray. Well, that's what we all need when we're in a situation like that. People who know how to storm heaven on behalf of brothers and sisters in need. And that's what happened for the McCreary's. And today, we want to storm heaven for you. We know that there are many of you who are struggling with difficult situations, things that can seem like there's no answer to. The medicine can't touch them. Doctors don't have a good report, but God but God. And so today, we want to take some time to both fill your, fill your faith or build your faith with other reports and then take time to pray for you specifically. Here's one, Gordon. This is Alice, who's from El Reno, Oklahoma. She had serious blood clots in her legs. Her doctor recommended putting in stents. Before the procedure, she was watching this program just last month, and she heard you say this word of knowledge. God is taking all of that pain away now and healing you completely from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. That pain just left you. All of that discomfort is gone. It's never coming back again. Just receive it now. And then I followed up saying, someone else with blood flow also, your circulation is just being restored to you. You're going to sense it in the way that you feel. You will be well. Alice believed God was healing her. At her appointment, her doctor confirmed the clots were gone, the procedure no longer needed. Praise, Praise God indeed. Praise God. Way to go, Alice. All right, here's Nancy from Grottos, Virginia. 
That's a little bit of heaven on earth in the Shenandoah Valley. She had rheumatoid arthritis in her feet. Mm -hmm. She was watching the 700 Club. Terry said, you have, I, I don't know what the condition is, but it creates instability in your ankles and feet so that putting your shoes on is a challenge. Walking is a challenge. God is healing that now. You feel a warmth come into your feet and going up your calf as he strengthens all of that. All of those muscles, tendons, ligaments put back in their order and strengthen. You can walk normally again. Well, Nancy received healing. She can now freely move her Praise feet. God. And hallelujah, the lame walking again. That's what Jesus does. He's the Messiah. He restores sight to the blind. He gives hearing to the deaf. He, he rises people up from paralyzed beds. This is what he does. He is the Messiah, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he has done for thousands of years, he is doing today. Isn't that wonderful? Let's believe that. Let's just come to him. Jesus wants to come to you. You don't have to bargain. The bargain's already been made on a cross 2,000 years ago. Just receive it. Receive the benefit. Open your heart to believe it and let the rest be up to him. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you. We come to you believing. We come to you with open hearts. We come to you knowing that with you, all things are possible. So, Lord, we want that. We want to be with you where all things are possible. For with you, there is no sickness. With you, there is nothing but love, forgiveness, mercy that arises new every morning. So arise in our hearts. Let all of your enemies be scattered now. Let all pain, all sickness, all disease Leave our bodies now in Jesus' name. Reign in our hearts, Lord God. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in us. In us, Lord God. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Terry, God's given us. There's someone you who are suffering from mental confusion. It's kind of a new situation for you. You've not experienced that before, but you're very fearful that you are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. It is not. God is completely turning that around. You're not going to have any more confusion. You're not going to have the forgetfulness you've been experiencing. Just receive that healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's someone here having difficulty breathing, and what I'm getting is a picture of um, the air sacs in your lungs not being able to expand. I don't know what's causing that, but they, they just have difficulty expanding, and so you just have a chronic shortness of breath. You, you're struggling to breathe. God is healing you right now. He's restoring your lungs. Your lung tissue is going to be made new. In Jesus' name, take that deep breath. Don't be afraid of it. Take that deep breath and realize God is breathing through you right now. He's breathing into your lungs, giving you life, energy, vitality in, in him. Just receive it now in Jesus' name. There's someone else. You've got arthritis in, in both hands. Um, I believe it's rheumatoid arthritis. You heard the story about woman with arthritis in her ankles, you say, please say that. And so for you, you're getting tingling right now throughout both of your hands. God is healing that. He's taking away all the inflammation, all the swelling, all the difficulty. Just begin to move your fingers and realize how much he's healed you. He's restored you in Jesus' name. Someone else, you have a chronic kidney condition. It's just the, mm. your back just aches all the time, and you're on medication for it. God's healing that condition for you. You've had it for many years, but today it's gone in Jesus' name. Someone, you've had an eye injury to your left eye. I believe there was a blow, and literally the eyeball um, came out of the socket, and it's just uh, been a recurring problem, blurry vision, uh, just... God's able to restore all of that. With him, all things are possible. Just, just walk into that 
impossibility. What the doctors say will never happen is happening to you right now. All the bones are being healed. The eye is being healed. The nerve is being healed. The retina is being, all of it's being healed. In Jesus' name, to see what you couldn't do before. Eyes were made to see. Just see now through it in Jesus' name. Now, there's someone else, a woman. You were married recently, and you had some kind of a pre-existing pre condition that um, has made you fearful that you're not going to be able to conceive children. That is not the case. You're going to have children. God is blessing you and healing your body today in Jesus' name. Um, I'm seeing someone with a, like almost a harness um, around your right shoulder. Um, and tremendous pain in the, in the joint and in the back of the shoulder. Uh, God's able to restore. He's able to heal. He's able to completely get rid of that injury and, and restore it as if it never happened. Uh, all of the pain can leave you now. It is leaving you now. In the name of Jesus, be made whole. Lord God Almighty, we thank you. We thank you for the many gifts that you give to us, how you provide for us, how you heal us, how you forgive us. We receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've been healed, let us know. Let us share in your good report. Give us a call, 1-800-700-7000. And if you need healing, we believe in prevailing prayer. That's the prayer that doesn't give up until you get the answer. So we want to stand with you in prayer. All you have to do is call, 1-800-700-7000. Welcome to Washington for the CBN News Break. The makers of a new COVID vaccine are claiming 100% efficacy against severe disease and hospitalizations. The drug manufacturers Sanofi and GlaxoSmithKline say two doses are needed to receive 100% protection from COVID's worst outcomes. The Europe-based pharmaceutical companies also say their new vaccine is 75% effective against moderate to severe disease. Sanofi GSK plans to submit the new shots for authorization in both the United States and Europe. Well, after a brave battle with cancer, people are remembering the life of a Christian singer by the name of Jane Marcheski, who died at the age of 31. Known as Brightbird, Nightbird, uh, she was a Liberty University student. Not long after she left, Jane developed breast cancer. She was certain she'd beat it, and she did, even releasing a song about it in 2019 called Girl in a Bubble. That's the music video you're seeing right there. The cancer came back, though, and spread. But Jane made it big on America's Got Talent with an audition that's now been viewed by more than 40 million times. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Hania suffered pain in her abdomen so severe she couldn't stand. When a doctor diagnosed the problem, her family had no way to pay for the operation their little girl needed. And that's when you came to her rescue. Six-year-old Hania was born with a hernia. Her parents didn't realize how serious it was until it ruptured while she was playing on an old-fashioned seesaw at her school. A girl jumped off the other side and she fell hard. When I saw her, I started crying because she was writhing in pain. She could not stand it. For years, her parents wondered why their daughter had suffered with pain in her lower abdomen. They'd been too poor to take her to a doctor. When I'm in pain, I can help her with anything. I feel very sleepy and I have to lie down. I pray God help me make this pain go away. Even after the injury at school, the family struggled to find enough money to take their daughter to the hospital. We had to save money. I sold bread because my husband only earns about $5 a day. Finally, they scraped enough together to go to the hospital. When they did an ultrasound, they saw she had a hernia. From then on, we've been struggling to find a way to get surgery. When Operation Blessing learned about her condition, 
we paid for Hania to receive free surgery to repair the hernia. We've had a hard life, but thank God this opportunity came to us like a gift from God. A few weeks after the operation, we returned to Hania's home and learned that the surgery was successful. I feel very good. I'm excited to go to school. Thank God for Operation Blessing. I'm very thankful to the people who support them. That thank you goes to you if you're a member of the 700 Club. If you're not a member, I encourage you to join with us. How do you do that? All you have to do is pick up the phone and call 1-800-700-7000 and say, I want to be a member. I want to sign up. I want to be a part of this because you're joining tens of thousands of people that say, yes, let's make a difference in the world. Uh, when children have problems that they can't solve, their families don't have enough money to afford a surgery, you can be there for them to provide them and give them a life, give them a hope, give them a future. All made possible because people like you care enough to give. So if that's you, give us a call. 1-800-700-7000. Say, I want to join. How much is it? $20 a month? That's 65 cents a day. Some can join at higher levels. We have 700 Club Gold at 40 a month. 1,000 Club is $1,000 a year. That breaks out to $84 a month. Now, when you call and join, I've got a gift for you. It's my father's latest book, The Power of the Holy Spirit in You. He's distilled 60 years of active ministry through CBN into a book, uh, how he got direction from the Holy Spirit, how my mother and, and father would pray together. God would speak to them, show them verses in the Bible that would give them guidance for what to do next with CBN. Uh, and it's just absolutely incredible. You can see the results now, 60 year, years later. I want you to have this because you can get the same guidance. God wants to guide you through your life. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. All you have to do is ask, but you need to know how to ask. So this book will tell you. Get, to get it, join with us. 1-800-700-7000. Terry? Joint pain, muscle soreness, fatigue, gut issues, brain fog. Dr. Don Colbert noticed many of his patients suffering these symptoms. Some of them even had to be put on statins for high cholesterol. The baffling part, they said they were following a healthy keto diet as recommended by Dr. Colbert himself. New York Times bestselling author, Dr. Don Colbert has sold over 10 million books and treated over 50,000 patients in his years of practicing medicine. His focus is not only on treating sickness, but preventing it. In his latest book, Beyond Keto, Dr. Colbert takes the keto diet even further by combining it with a Mediterranean diet and cutting edge research on gut health. Well, please welcome back to the 700 Club, Dr. Don Colbert. Dr. Don, it's great to have you here today. Hey, it's great being here, Terry. Tell us what you discovered about your patients who said that they were following the keto diet and yet were experiencing health issues like high cholesterol. Well, what I found years ago when I wrote the book, The Keto Zone, I found out that many people were following the keto diet, which is a low carb, high fat diet, but they were eating too much butter, too much cheese, too much cream and coconut oil, and especially too much red meat, sausage, bacon. And it was creating tremendous health problems in their bodies. So I said, there's a healthy keto diet and there's an unhealthy keto diet. And so what I found is that most keto patients are not eating near enough veggies, not near enough fiber, nor are they getting enough omega-3 fat. So it's unleashing inflammation in their bodies. Wow. So what I did is I found out that the Mediterranean diet, on the other hand, is the most powerful anti-inflammatory diet, but there's an unhealthy Mediterranean diet and a healthy Mediterranean diet. So I took the best of the Mediterranean diet and the best of the keto, healthy keto diet, and merged them together into what I believe is the most healthy dietary lifestyle anyone can follow. Talk a little bit about the trip that you took that actually opened your eyes to this, to, to finding a way to a healthier lifestyle. 
Well, about five years ago, I took a trip with my wife to Greece, and especially we went to the Isle of Crete. And on the Isle of Crete, we, uh, my eyes were open. Here I found that these people, even though about 37% of the population smoked, they had very low, a very low incidence of heart disease, cancer, and other degenerative diseases. And it was the foods they were eating, the fats they were eating, the veggies they were eating, the fiber, but especially the olive oil, as well as the fish, as well as the beans and peas and lentils. And this is the Mediterranean diet, which is so important for everyone. So what does it look like when you mix the keto and the Mediterranean diet? Well, what it looks like is this. First of all, if a person has weight issues or blood sugar problems, they need to start with a healthy keto program. Keto is simply low carbohydrates, a lot of green veggies, a lot of healthy fats like olive oil, avocado oil, nuts and seeds, as well as healthy proteins. Now, what's so amazing, once you get that fat content high enough, like about usually seven to eight tablespoons of healthy fat a day, the appetite is controlled. And many people only need two meals a day, but it unleashes a process in the body that's one of the most powerful healing processes in the body, which is the process of mild nutritional ketosis, where you burn fat as fuel and it lowers the blood sugar. But then after the patients achieve their weight and blood sugar control, we make a gradual shift over to a healthy Mediterranean lifestyle with those powerful anti-inflammatory veggies. We, we add more beans, peas, lentils, hummus, chickpeas that are pressure cooked so we don't have the gut issues and that has all the fiber as well as those omega-3s, those healthy omega-3 fish, also chicken and turkey and healthy sources of protein, but especially omega-3s. Most Americans are eating farm-raised fish. They're inflammatory to the body. They contain pesticides. They contain all kinds. Of, they're fed usually soybeans. They're also, they contain pesticides, and they're usually given a coloring agent that makes them look healthy, but they're not. So again, what I do is I merge the best of the keto, which is low carb, high fat, with the best of the Mediterranean. I start them on a keto diet in order to burn the fat, lower the sugar, and then I, I transfer them over to a healthy Mediterranean diet so they can follow this program for life. And as a result, we see so many people with chronic health problems start to improve. But I just wanted to add that the McCrary's are patients of mine. I saw your prior clip, love the clip, and we, we help support them in prayer during that whole process. Yeah. And, and they're very diligent in their lifestyle, I know. I I also know that there are a lot of people who espouse the keto diet, but they really kind of abuse it and make it their own version of that. And yes. that, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Right. The keto diet, for most people, I'd say 90, 95%, it's an unhealthy keto diet. And it's way too much of the wrong fat, way too much saturated fat, not near enough olive oil or avocado oil or nuts, which are so anti-inflammatory, and too many fried foods. Fried foods are very inflammatory to the body. And so what happens, 80% of people on keto, they eventually give it up. And what happens, unfortunately, when they give it up, they continue to eat the fats, but they add all the sugars, carbs, and starches so that unleashes even more inflammation, and so many of them have real high cholesterol, and so many develop health problems as a result. So we want them to, if they're going to do keto, do the healthy keto. Burn the belly fat, burn the fat, lower the sugar, unleash the healing processes in the body, but then eventually you become keto adapted and metabolically flexible so you can shift over to the healthy Mediterranean diet. You see, I've written books for 25 years. What would Jesus eat? That's a Mediterranean diet. Let food be your medicine. That's a healthy Mediterranean diet. The keto zone diet, that's a keto diet. But then beyond keto is the best of the keto diet and the best of the Mediterranean diet. Well, I want to say you've done the homework for everybody. It's called Beyond Keto, Burn Fat, Heal Your Gut, and Reverse Disease. Who doesn't want to do all of that? It's available wherever books are sold. Beautiful cover as well. Thank you, Dr. Don. It's great to have you with us again. Thank you, Terry.
bless you have a good day okay time for an email question you ready i'm ready okay this is haley who says i am a young mom and since having my son i have really had my eyes opened about how precious life is how do I know God is real? I grew up in a Baptist church, but grew away from the church after high school. I want my son to know the Lord. I've taken him to church, but we don't go very often because of COVID scares. Well, Haley, uh, there's nothing like being a parent to reveal to you the love of a, a love of a father, the love of God, the unconditional love. Uh, I know for me, it gave me whole new dimensions of insight into it. You know, to answer the question, how do you know God is real? Well, you can look into your son's eyes and you can know. You can look to the heavens, they declare the glory of the Lord. You can look at life all around you. You know, the, just the, the, the magnitude of what God has done for us and, and you, get the, you get the idea. To grow in your faith, I encourage people, read the Bible and, and read it on a regular basis, if, if not daily basis and just spend time with him. Ask him to reveal himself to you in scripture. And if you want to bring your son along for the ride, I'll, I'll do a shameless plug. Watch Superbook together. Uh, it's a wonderful app. You can download it from all the app stores uh, and put it on any tablet, any smartphone, any smart TV, and you can watch those episodes together. You'll grow in your faith and you'll have the assurance you're raising your children in the faith of uh, uh, that's been for thousands of years. It's a wonderful thing to do, and the best part, it's free. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Where are you going to find that? Well, it's uh, we don't have time for any more email questions, but we do want to say how much we love hearing from all of you. So send your email. Ah, we'll try to right answer. Yeah. This again. There was plenty of time. <laughs> you know, we're just getting nervous about time. So we'll just spend more time in Scripture. Here is from John 3. It's a wonderful verse, and just... It's one of those to memorize where the Apostle John praying for you. I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Realize that when you go all in with God, he goes all in with you. He wants to prosper you. He wants to give you good things. He wants to give you health. He wants to give you security. Rest in it. God bless.